How infectious is that virus? How good is free birth control? And what are in those supplements you're taking? This is Healthcare Triage News. Our first story comes to us courtesy of NPR. They recently put out an awesome graphic that shows how contagious different human viruses are. The gist of it is something known as r naught. It's a mathematical term that describes the average number of people who are made sick by another person in an outbreak. The higher the r naught is, the more infectious the disease is. A number of things can affect r naught: the amount of time you're infectious, how much virus is needed to cause an infection, and even how it's spread, these things can all matter. Measles, one of the most contagious human diseases, has an r naught of 18. That means without vaccination, a person with measles will give it to 18 other people. You can imagine how quickly that could spread through a community. When you vaccinate, the number drops to about zero. Mumps has an r naught of 10. SARS and HIV are four, but Ebola is two. That's because Ebola is hard to transmit. Of course, Ebola is really, really deadly. There's a reason people are afraid of it. But diseases with a lower r naught are easier to contain especially when we work to do so like we are right now. Our second story comes from a recent study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It described results from the CHOICE project, which gave free contraception to 9,000 teenage women. CHOICE differed from many other projects in that most of the teens chose a long-acting reversible contraceptive, or LARC. Unlike condoms or even the pill, LARCs like IUDs or estrogen implants require a doctor's visit and are more expensive. But they also work much better. More than three quarters of teens age 14 to 17 in the Choice Project chose one of those two methods, and more than two thirds of teens age 18 to 19 did. Sexually active teens in the United States have a pregnancy rate of about 159 per 1,000. Those in the Choice Program had a pregnancy rate of only 34 per 1,000. Sexually active teens nationally have a birth rate of 94 per 1,000 versus 19 in the Choice Program. And sexually active teens in the U.S. have an abortion rate of about 42 per 1,000. Those in the CHOICE program had a rate less than 10. If you remove the financial and access barriers to long-acting birth control, more girls get it, and fewer teen pregnancies, births, and abortions occur. Something to think about. And our last story is a quick warning about supplements. In the United States, dietary supplements aren't regulated nearly as thoroughly as drugs. Because of this, the ingredients in supplements can vary widely. In the past, some nutritional supplements contained 1,3-dimethylamylamine, or DMAA, which is a stimulant. Recently, though, that was banned in the United States, United Kingdom, and other countries because it's associated with heart failure, stroke, and sudden death. DMAA had become more popular after ephedrine was banned in supplements in 2005 because that was bad for you, too. So be it. But now savvy supplement makers are introducing a new substance known as 1,3-dimethylbutylamine, or DMBA. DMBA hasn't been outlawed yet, but 1,3-dimethylbutylamine is a really close analog of 1,3-dimethylamylamine. I'd say to the research, but DMBA has never been studied in humans. Never. No studies. Supplements are a huge business. Stimulants are added because they make you feel good but they're unregulated, unstudied, and keep turning out to be harmful. I'm often baffled by the fact that many of the same people who are so worried about things like artificial sweeteners or gluten can be so blasé about supplements. The former are well-studied and safe for almost everyone. The latter, you don't always know.